and our next speaker is Amory Paris. And uh, hi. hello, hi, hello, Amory. Hi, thank you for um, having me. So I'm going to present Amory to you, dear audience. Uh, Amory is a research telecommunication engineer working for INRIA in the city laboratory at INSA in Lyon. After developing an interest in SDR during his studies, he's now working with a FIT Cortex lab tested to extend experimentation capabilities for uh, the Internet of Things, wireless communications on the physical and Mac layer. So we're we're going into well, we're in the networked computer and networked radio section, and uh, the topic is. Um, um, dynamic LoRa, which is uh, um, an IoT protocol, LoRa One. Dynamic LoRa physical layer for Mac experimentation using the Fit Cortex Lab testbed, and he has uh, some more contributors which I would like to mention here. Uh, another contributor is Leonardo Cardoso, who we've also here in in the moderation team and Jean-Marie Jean -Marie Gors, uh, and uh, Jean-Marie is not here with us. But <laughs> nevertheless, uh, let's now play your pre-recorded video. Please, video team, go ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is Amory Paris. I'm working in INRIA as a research engineer for the City Laboratory in Lyon. Today, I'm going to present a LoRa physical layer usable within the Fit Cortex Lab testbed and made for Mac experimentation. Our project comes at a crossroad between two goals. The first one is a protocol, LoRa1. So, LoRa is the physical layer for LoRa1 network. It's a long range and low power IoT communication protocol. Our goal is to have a customizable physical and Mac layer so that we can work on multiple access scenario or new method for IoT. Uh, our project directly stands on an implementation made by a team in EPFL. Our second goal is a testbed called Fit Cortex Lab. It was built for wireless communication, and it's always important for us to uh, find new ways to experiment on, its on this testbed and to extend its capabilities. To summarize it, our goal is to have a plug-and-play LoRa physical layer for Fit Cortex Lab. Wireless communication, and more precisely IoT, is getting a lot of interest in the research community. The Fit Cortex Lab testbed is an opportunity for everyone to experiment on theoretical results. To do such a thing, it was built answering a few requirements. First, it's a test and try environment, meaning it's as easy as possible for any user to construct and develop new experiments in a free testbed accessible for everyone everywhere. It produces some reproducible results because the room is isolated from any outside interference. And finally, it offers some adaptable physical layer. This is where GNU Radio comes in, and also our multiple equipments like USRP, PicoSDR, and OctoClock, which provides some uh, frequency and time synchronization. This is a map of the room where we can see all the nodes position. We use this map to uh, construct uh, our scenario during experimentation. This is what the room looks like. In this picture, we can see all the shielded walls, which are used to protect the room from any outside interference, and also to contain any signal emitted within the testbed. We can see the USRP, because there are some antenna, and finally some robots, which we use for mobility experimentation. Using the Cortex Lab testbed is quite straightforward. We provide some Docker image compatible with the, test the testbed Cortex Lab. In it, you will find GNU Radio and other software. You can simply pull those images in uh, your local computer to build your project. And once this is, this is done, you can push your image in Docker Hub and then pull it in Cortex Lab. Finally, you will have all your project and file in Cortex Lab, which you can control through SSH. Now let's talk about LoRa. LoRa is a physical layer for LoRa 1 network. It's a chip spread spectrum modulation, meaning we have a frequency variation for any transmitted symbol, as we can see in the example for this up chip symbol. 
If we have a look at the symbol expression, we can see that the instant frequency depends on the number of samples per symbol, which also depends on the spreading factor. This is an important parameter for LoRa physical layer because it will set the time to transmit one symbol and therefore the robustness and the range of the signal. It will come, obviously, at the cost of a lower bitrate. LoRa also provides some additional coding, coding for channel and source coding. We have some whitening, which will set an equal probability to transmit a 0 or a 1. We have some hamming coding, which will help to detect and correct errors that may occur during the transmission. The coding rate, which is a really important parameter for LoRa physical layer, uh, will indicate the number of redundancy bits to determine the system capacity to detect and correct error. We have some interleaving, which will mix symbols together so that we can spread the errors that may occur during the transmission. And finally, we have some gray mapping that will map bits value to symbol value. Now about the implementation. Like I said in the beginning, our project directly stands on a work made by a team in a payfield to implement Ingnuedio, a LoRa physical layer. So when we started our project, we already had the modulation and demodulation part, which we quickly adapted to be run inside the Fit Cortex Lab testbed. This is what their project looks like. However, this wasn't enough for us. Like I said in the beginning, our goal is to have a customizable physical layer that can connect to any Mac or upper layer. To do such a thing, we've added some functionality. The first one is the parameter modification. Those blocks are going to receive as an input some instruction to then modify any parameters or value within the modulation and demodulation chain. The second functionality is the performance evaluation that will give back some key performance indicator or interesting value on any demodulated messages. This allows ourselves to have an ongoing communication adaptation based on any feedback it may give. However, this wasn't suitable for us. As a matter of fact, developing an IMAC or upper layer using new radio is time consuming, and we wanted our plug and play LoRa physical layer to be usable by anyone that may or may not have any prior knowledge on GNU radio. Therefore, we've decided to implement this upper layer in an external program. Uh, by external program, I mean everything developed in Python or C or other. So, to do such a thing, we had to create two interfaces. The first one, from the external program to GNU Radio, uh, allows us to transmit uh, instruction to the physical layer. The second interface, from GNU Radio to the external program, allows us to send back feedback on any demodulated message. This way, we can implement any upper layer here that will have all the feedback and that can control the LoRa physical layer within GNU Radio. Both interfaces are built in a similar way. We are using UDP between the external program and GNU Radio to send JSON object with all the information we need in it. For instance, for the parameter modification, we have here a JSON object uh, that can set the coding rate, the spreading factor, gain value for transmission and reception, frequency value for transmission and reception, obviously the content of the message we want to transmit, and in the near future, we will have the possibility to use or not the cyclic redundancy check and to set the bandwidth of the signal. How can we apply those new values? We have here a few techniques. The first one, we use it when we have a parameter which is being used by more than one block. We put in the beginning of the bit stream that match a new message, a tag value with the parameter name and the new value for this parameter. And this way, every block will check before doing any signal processing, any upcoming tags, and will apply the new value before doing the signal processing. This is the only way for us to be sure that the new value will be taken into account at the beginning of the message and not in the middle of it. We also have a technique, technique which can be used uh, when a parameter is used by only one block, is the set and get function from top block. You may know that GNU Radio generate, when you execute a project, uh, GNU Radio generate a Python file called top block. In it, you can find some set and get function that will modify variable or parameters and the value used in blocks. This is only available for blocks which have some callback function implemented for their parameters. 
One final technique, which we use for the gain and frequency technique, is made available by the UHD module. It's possible to send to the UHD sync and source block some command through asynchronous message with a new gain and frequency value. This is the blocks we implemented to take as an input all the commands through, sent through UDP and send them to the appropriate place. Now for the performance evaluation part, we're gathering some information on every demodulated messages, starting from information from the header, like for instance the coding rate or the payload length. We also have some information coming from the demodulation process, like the number of corrected and erroneous bits, the spreading factor and obviously the content of the message, and finally if the cyclic redundancy check was passed correctly, meaning if the message was demodulated properly. We also have some power information with the power of the receive packet, the power of the noise prior to the packet, some signal to noise ratio, and some average value on a settable number of messages. All of this information are gathered by a simple technique. In every demodulation block, we add an asynchronous output on which the demodulation block will send the wanted information at the end of every demodulated messages. We also have some power uh, evaluation. Uh, to do that, we have a block with a buffer inside of it. This block will receive every complex uh, sample from the USRP, will store all the noise value, and at the end of every received message, it will compile the message power, the noise power, and some signal to noise ratio value. This is what it looks like. We have the energy evaluation block that will compile all the power values. We have an example of, for instance, a block that will do the cyclic redundancy check and then send all of their information to this performance collector block, uh, which will send eventually uh, all the gathered information on the uh, UDP interface. I'm now going to make a demonstration. Thanks to the LoRa physical layer, which can be controllable by any external program, we can create in this external program an upper layer that will control all parameters and messages to be sent and have any feedback on all demodulated messages. Our first upper layer is an interactive node that will allow the user to set manually all parameters and send messages. The second upper layer is a base station that will receive any message and send back an acknowledgement. Those upper layers are examples of client implementation that is possible to develop using the two interfaces to set parameters, messages, and to receive feedback, therefore to control the GNU Radio physical layer and to set the behavior of the LoRa node. Both upper layers are written in Python 3 and we've made some tests using C. Both those upper layers use the same physical layer. Uh, all the behavior of the node is set in the upper layer, in the external program. This tutorial is available in the Cortex Lab wiki page. So for this demonstration, I'm connected here on the left on node 14, here and here in green, and on the right I'm connected in node 16, here and here in blue. Both nodes have their own USRP, so basically we have one USRP here and one USRP here. The first thing I'm going to do is to run the LoRa physical layer. Perfect. Now, to, to remind it, here, it's the same physical layer which is running on this node, on this USRP, and on this one. The only difference between the two nodes is going to be the upper layer. So on this one, I'm going to run the upper layer for the node, here in Python. And here for the base station. We can see here two things. First, in the node, we have here all the commands that we can manually set, and here the input to set these parameters and the message to transmit. Also, we can see that I manually set up the upper layer for the base station and the node to transmit to their, fre to their physical layer, at the beginning, the frequency value for transmission and reception, so here and here. This is automatically sent by the upper layer to the physical layer at the beginning. Right now, we're going to try to send a message. So, 
let me input here the message and a different uh, parameter a value, for instance, the coding rate. Here, all those information are only stored in the upper layer. I need to send in the command for this uh, upper layer to transmit the instruction to the physical layer here. So what just happened? So when I clicked on send here, the upper layer for the node has sent this list of instructions to the physical layer. We can see that it received the list of instructions right here. Following this instruction, the physical layer for the node sent the cortex lab message with a coding rate value of 2. We can see that the physical layer for the base station has received this message. We can see the header here. We can see the coding rate at 2, the message content, and we can see that the message passed the cyclic redundancy check, so the demodulation was done properly. We can also see that once the message was uh, completely demodulated, the physical, physical layer gathered all available information and sent it to the upper layer. We can see here the coding rate, the message uh, powers, the number of bits which were detected, the error, number of errors detected and corrected, the noise energy, some signal to noise ratio, etc. This is the list I showed you earlier. The upper layer for the base station has received all of the information here and automatically, because, because this is how I set it up, the base station asked the physical layer to send an acknowledgement. We can see that the physical layer for the base station here received the information, the instruction to send the message ACK Cortex Lab. This message was then received here in the node physical layer. We can see the header here, the message content, the cyclic redundancy check, and all the uh, feedback information which were sent to the upper layer. We can now try to send a different message with different value. Let's now put as well a gain value, a lower one, which is uh, the default one. And let's change as well the coding rate value. So I will not go through everything again. We can just here compare two values. For instance, the noise energy here when I ask the message with the default gain value, which was at 30. And here, the message uh, power received when I set the gain at 10. So this is obviously different. We can also see the different coding rate value here at 4 for the second message and here at 2 for the first one. So this is how through the two interface to send instruction and receive feedback, I can control my physical layer. To summarize my presentation, we have here a plug and play LoRa physical layer usable within the Fit Cortex Lab testbed that can be connected to any Mac or Apple layer without prior knowledge on GNU radio. For our current and future work, right now we are trying to adapt a LoRa 1 Mac implementation to be used on our physical layer. We also plan on using the LoRa physical layer in a frame synchronized framework. And in the near future, we would like to try to implement a reinforcement learning method to compare it with the Aloha version right now used in the LoRa 1 Mac version. Thank you for your attention and feel free to contact me if you have any question. Bye. Thank you very much, Amaury. This was a, a very interesting talk. And I see that uh, uh, quite quite recently, we're getting more and more talks on, on LoRa and the Internet of Things. So um, in, in the uh, organization team of the SDRA or the ham radio team, actually, we already thought about, OK, maybe maybe we should do some more about some more things about uh, uh, the Internet of Things within the field of amateur radio. And of course, there is uh, not just the modules for 868 megahertz in Europe, but also the 433, which fall directly into the amateur radio band. So we can use LoRa quite directly and and uh, and, and freely in, and, and have a lot of fun with uh, LoRa. And uh, I think very recently also here in Munich, uh, you know, the Olympic Tower here in Munich, which is a big a symbol of the Munich skyline. Um, uh, there is a, a big amateur radio installation, of course, up there. And uh, I've read recently that there is a LoRa gateway that's been placed up there 
for 433 megahertz. So that's uh, an important and a highly interesting field of research and and uh, field of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so your research is highly welcome here. Okay, um, I would like to uh, ask some questions to to my colleagues. Um, Particularly, Leonardo, maybe you, you, you have some ideas also, since you've been also a contributor to this talk. We didn't have any, uh, any comments here in the YouTube chat. Um, th there, was, there was one comment, yeah, the, someone uh, liked what uh, Amaury did. So um, I, I would just like to comment one thing uh, about the work of Amaury. If, uh, it's true that I am a part of it, so... I'm, I'm, I'm a bad person to make questions, but I can talk a little bit about it. Um, so the thing um, about Amaury's work, which stands out, in my opinion, is the fact that this is all, this is all, be, all, being, doing, all be, being done sorry, for uh, this test bed that we have in Lyon, which is called Fit Cortex Lab. So Fit Cortex Lab is a big test bed that contains um, lots of nodes. So these are software-defined radio nodes, um, and we have up to 40 of them. Several different kinds, um, some USRP, some are NUTAC. I don't know if you guys know about it. So it's a NUTAC Pico SDR, 2x2 two two and 4x4. Four four. And they have big FPGAs. And the idea is that we foster not only scientific development with this testbed, but we also um, want to create some, some, um, uh, some synergy with respect to the people who are working with uh, software-defined radio. So the idea of, of the testbed itself is to come, create an account. It's for free. You can use it. Um, it's a public. Uh, it's a. It's a. It's a public testbed that has been financed with public funds from France. Anyone can ask for an account, and anyone can use it. And there are computers connected to SDRs inside of a shielded room, and you can experiment on any frequency you want. Of course, um, given the limitations of the SDRs inside and any powers you want. So if you want just to try out something, if you want, for example, to test bench one of your new um, you know, um, physical layers, anything you want to do, if you just want to have fun with it, if you want to practice with GNU Radio, you can. So this is, I think this is, this is one um, thing that I would like to point out with respect to the work of Amaury. And his work um, goes straight into uh, this, this, this Cortex Lab um, idea. And, 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 and he is, uh, he's making the code available free so anyone can, can uh, download it and play around with it, not only in Cortex Lab, but outside as well. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you're all interested, you just go ahead to um, wiki.cortexlab.fr and you can ask for an account and... And that's it. You can play around with GNU Radio, play around with SDRs. Um, it's it's very flexible. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And uh, I think we'll stay in contact because I'm very curious of what you have there. That's good. Very good. Okay. Do we have any more questions? We have about one more minute to fill. I was just wondering, uh, because now LoRa is being used uh, for and for in, in more and more applications, and of course we have LoRa, LoRa Ham uh, for ham radio, ham radio uh, amateur radio communication. So if I were to try to analyze some of the packets using your tool, you mentioned, you showed how your uh, GNU Radio physical layer implementation interacts with external tools and you implemented the, the upper layer of Mac access. If I wanted to analyze the payload of a packet, would I be able to use some of the software that I'm usually uh, familiar with for analyzing Wi-Fi, Ethernet packets or whatever? Uh, how could I have a look at your uh, data that have been transmitted using this LoRa protocol? Well. Uh, if uh, if the data that is written by the uh, API from the physical layer is not enough for for your application for your software to uh, to, to be analyzed, uh, it's quite straightforward to make the modification within new radio to just return what you're interested in. So uh, I think it would be possible. I'm not familiar with the software you're referring to, but uh, anything can be get inside new radio and return to whatever external program. Okay, thanks. Okay. 
Thank you very much, Amori. Thanks for this interesting talk, interesting topic. Thanks for bringing You're this welcome. in. And uh, we'll see you again after the next talk because we still have one panel.